Hello and welcome to another video here at Pragmatic Works. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about how to perform a range lookup in Power BI. Essentially, how do we look up a date or to see if a date is between two dates? This is a pretty common uh, design pattern. This is something that's pretty common when you're working within data modeling and within like an enterprise data warehouse. It's quite common in Power BI as well. And so this week I was working with a customer, kind of working through a hackathon, building a data model, and we discovered that they were going to need to keep historical information about their employees. Because whenever a transaction occurs, and the transaction could be whatever it was, in this case we were actually performing uh, just surveys, let's call them surveys, right? Um, they were actually audits. So we're doing audits. And so if I do an audit for my department and I score a four out of five, that might be pretty good, right? But if Mitchell was in my department back in January and I'm four out of five, but then Mitchell changes departments in the dimension table, in his employee table, if he changes departments, now when those calculations calculate, the value changes to three out of four instead of four out of five. So as a department, I just dropped from 80% to 75. And the numbers could be much more drastic. So this is what's known as a historical table. We want to keep track of a historical table in Power BI. And then how do we map that data to our fact table? And I'm realizing as I go through this, I'm going to have to do a series on data modeling in Power BI on YouTube. If you're interested in that, if that excites you, let me know in the comments below. That'll motivate me to actually follow through with that. But I'm going to talk about what this looks like. So if I come over to my fact audits table and we look at the fact audits table, you'll see I have this very simple here. I have, it's essentially we're just tracking events that occur. So an audit was done on Mitchell Pearson on this date and an audit was done on Mitchell Pearson on this date. Now, what department was Mitchell in on those dates? Well, we would track that information really in the, we could track it here technically I don't like that from a dimensional modeling perspective. I'll put a link to my favorite dimensional modeling book in the link below as well. Um, so we could track it in the transaction table. That would be what's known as a degenerate dimension where you put some of your descriptive information here instead of tracking it in a separate dimension. But what I'm going to do is actually track it the way we normally would, which is I'm going to track that historical information in my dimension. Now, if you're familiar with the basic star schema, and you've kind of learned that a little bit working with Power BI, then you know that in your dimension, normally one record will represent one unique employee. If you're looking at product, one record represents one unique product. But when we keep historical information, we normally are going to have a couple of additional columns here that keep track of a start date and an end date. When did we start selling that product? When did we end selling that product for that price and start selling it for a new price? When did Mitchell work for consulting? And then when did Mitchell move from consulting and start working in training? Now, if I look at this, I can tell that Mitchell worked in consulting from August 1st of 2012 until June 1st of 2017. So any audits that took place with Mitchell would have occurred while he was in the consulting department. What I need to do is in my fact table, I need to map this key to my fact table so that regardless of how much Mitchell ever changes departments in the future, he always is going to be, that audit is always attributed to when he was in the consulting department. All right. Now, once again, this is, I love data modeling. That was my favorite part of when I worked in consulting was building these data models. That's my favorite part of training. We do hackathons where we work with customers and we'll do like one day going through their data. And our hackathons are not focused on the, the end product as much as it is training and teaching and working through the product. So, my customers, they show their screen and we walk through it and we talk about different scenarios. And I love, absolutely love doing those hackathons. And that's where this use case came from, right? So I want to do a range lookup here where I can get this key. Now we're going to do this. I, I'm going to do a separate video where I show you how to do this in DAX, but I don't want to do this in DAX. You've watched our classes before. You've watched our YouTube videos. You know that we recommend doing this in the Power Query Editor. And this time is no different. I want to do this in the Power Query Editor. I want to do a lookup and I want to add that key to my fact audits table so now I can build a relationship over here in the model view. So I'm going to launch the Power Query Editor. Now there, let, me, let me also mention there's a couple ways to do this type of range lookup. I worked with a guy many years ago by the name of Anthony Martin. He came up with a brilliant, it was seven and a half years ago we were on a project together. 
He came up with a brilliant way in SQL to do this where we did a cross join and we did a direct lookup and it was so incredibly awesome from a performance perspective. So I'm gonna do a separate video. I'm already got it queued up. Where I'm gonna talk about doing a cross join in the Power Query Editor as well and what that lookup might look like. They won't be focused on the lookup, but if you watch this video, that you'll have some context, right? So this is my table right here. This is my dim employee and this is my fact audits table. And what I wanna do, is I want to do, if you're coming from a SQL background, I want to do a join to the DIM employee and bring over the key. If you come from an Excel background, I want to do a VLOOKUP. I want to do a VLOOKUP and tell it, hey, let's join on the name and let's join on the date and bring back the key that I need. This is going to be a little tricky. Now, fortunately, thanks to the help of Google and somebody writing a really cool blog, which I'm going to show you in a minute, I was able to come up with this very quickly, this solution. So now what I'm going to do is first let's do a merge and i'm going to do a merge query this is a join i'm going to do a join and we're going to join from our fact audits table over to our dim employee and so for the first join here i'm just going to join on employee name so let's do that we're going to do a basic join on employee name we'll stick with left outer not too worried about the different join types and we'll click ok and this is what we get right now, what's interesting here, let me pull this up from the bottom. What we're getting is we're not getting one lookup. We're getting two because Mitchell is in that dimension table twice. This is a little bit of a problem. So I'm getting a table of results. Now, what I want to do at this point is I want to return the record that properly represents this date. So where this date falls between those two dates. So for the first row right here, we should be returning a value of one and because 517 of 2015 is both between August 1st and of 2012 and you know 2017. And then the second record, we're saying, look, Mitchell was part of an audit that occurred in 2021. When did that audit take place? Well, that would have been in between these two records right here. And I just put an arbitrary date in the future to make this work. And that's something we do a lot of times in data warehousing as well. All right, so how do we do that? This is the tricky part, and I couldn't quite figure it out on my own. Not quickly enough, so I resorted to the web. I do that a lot, and I found a blog that I like that works well. So let me show you the blog. I'll put this link in the link below, comments below. There's something else I said I'll put there, so I'll have to watch the video myself and remember what I said. But here it is right here. Let me show you this blog. So this is Power BI and Excel are better together. I don't even know who this is. I just found it, right? I'm gonna put the link in the link below. And there's a bunch of stuff here at the top you don't need to know about. But here it is, right? So when we get a little bit further down, it says the first thing you want to do is join on right here. So join on the customer. It's very similar to my example that I had for my customer. And that returns this table. And now for that table, we want to take the date. Let me kind of zoom in here. Take the date column of the table that I'm on, which would be this right here. Take that date, select all the rows from the table. All right, select all the rows from the table. Um, which was called rates right here. You see where they got the rates table. And for each row, check to see if the date, the from date is less than my date and the to date is greater than. That's all we do. This is a pretty cool, pretty, I like this example a lot. So I'll put that in the chat window for you. And now we're just gonna do it ourselves. I'm gonna walk you through this real quick. So the first thing I wanna do is add a custom column, right? We're gonna be adding a custom column to this table right here. And so I'm gonna come up to the top and say add column and we'll do custom column right here. And let's call this column something like employee key because that's really what I wanna bring back. I think it's employee ID. In fact, I can look at it right here. Yeah, we'll keep it the same. So we'll go with employee ID so it matches the DIM employee table. And so the first thing I wanna do here is we're going to define a variable that captures the value of the date that we wanna do a comparison on, right? So we're gonna say let and then we'll build that variable out. And I'm gonna call this something like the current date. He used in the blog over there, he used my date, but I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna call mine current date. So this is a variable, you can call yours whatever you want. I'm gonna say the current date equals the audit date from this table, all right? So that's the first thing I wanna do. Once you're done with that, we're gonna say in, and then we're gonna start writing our expression. So let me go down to the next line. All right. So now we wanna check and say, so this is the part I didn't quite get. So table.select rows. This is the magic formula right here because table.select rows is going to essentially select the rows from this table. And then you're saying, well, what table are you selecting the rows from? 
and this is where we type in dim employee. So we're going to pull that column right there. And so it's going to look at all of the rows within that right there within that table that's inside of that dim employee. And for each row, right? So for each row and let me make sure, yep, each row, we're going to check to make sure that the date is in between the date. And so in my table, I called those, what did I call them? Start date and end date, I believe. Yes. So the first one here is going to be start date. All right. And I want to make sure the start date is less than or equal to my current date. Current date, remember, is the row that we're looking at. So right here. And I assigned it a variable of current date. So I want to make sure the start date in the lookup table is less than or equal to my current date. And I want to make sure, and that should be and, it is, and I want to make sure that the end date from the lookup table <clears throat> is greater than or equal to my current date. And I believe that is it, and it is. Had to look at my notes just to make sure so we can get this done in one clip. So there we go. If we hit OK now, that's going to give us another table of results, and then we just choose from that which column we want to return. So I'm going to click OK, and then let's look at this again. So this one returned a table that said all of these columns, but it had two rows. So how do we choose which row? Well, now this should be returning all of the columns as well, but now it should be returning the correct row. And if you look at it, it is. This is awesome. If you've ever done a merge before in Power Query Editor, the next step is easy. We go over here. You choose what column you want to return from that related table. Click OK. And there we go. A little bit of cleanup here. I'm going to remove that. I'm going to change this over to a whole number. And that is the completed example. If you like this video, make sure you take a moment. My son told me that if you don't subscribe in the next three seconds, you'll have bad luck, I think, or you'll have good luck if you do subscribe. I don't remember. I guess that's what cool YouTubers do. So subscribe, hit that like button, make sure that you keep a watch out for Pragmatic Works videos in the future. And then I hope you enjoyed this video. Enjoy.